Yeah. With our wine update. Yeah. Um, yeah, start with a joke. Um, they say if you're nervous about public speaking, you should, other than stutter a lot, you should stop and kind of take a deep breath, look at the audience, and imagine them all naked. Glad you have laptops. <laughs> uh, yeah, so start with a joke, pretend I said something funny. Let's go. Um, so, engaging the audience. Um, I'm actually part-time, I do teaching a lot. So, one of the things I like to do as a teacher is make everyone raise their hands. Um, so, do it. <laughs> okay, so, wait, keep up, keep up. Um, you got your hand up, alright. Put it down if you do not need to run any Windows application for any purpose, ever. <laughs> Okay, and while you're putting it down, pat yourself on the head, right? <laughs> okay, um, so look around. Uh, this is among Ubuntu developers. We have a very large portion of the audience who are needing to run Windows applications in some respect. Um, you can keep your hand up, uh, if you like. So, okay, let's go. Um, so yeah, you're not alone. Um, Popcon says about 50% of our users have Wine itself. Um, a little bit less actually use it, but 50% uh, of our users have Wine installed, and this is PopCon data. So PopCon is, uh, doesn't count Wubi users, because it doesn't present them the ability to uh, check I want to do PopCon as easily. So uh, this may be an underrepresented measure of how many people need something like Wine to run these applications. Um, so I have my own server. Um, this is just for historical reasons. I used to push out um, Wine beta releases on it before we had Launchpad PPAs, and it sort of stuck around since then. There are over 150,000 beta testers on Wine 1121. Um, I just checked last Friday. So keep moving. Um, speaking of my web server, uh, this is the coolest chart ever. My web server is better than yours. This is the stats from it. We'll note, um, it's a very typical web server. You see, wget is uh, ten times as popular as Internet Explorer. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, wait, go back one. Um, the up arrow. <laughs> Previous shirt there. Yeah, um, so wget's more popular. Um, CPM is better than BSD. Uh, <laughs> uh, Linux beats Windows, of course. It also beats Macintosh. Um, yeah, Solaris is down there with 17 people out of the uh, 119 million hits. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, all right, now we can move. Um, so, okay, uh, typical application. Um, Valve has Steam, um, which many of us don't use, but many real people do. Um, <laughs> It's a game content system, right? Um, Valve is nice enough to, every month, they run a survey of the uh, users' computers that are using Steam. And it turns out from the data from this, you can figure out if someone's using Wine, because you just look at whatever video or sound drivers they're using, and it says Wine in there. So um, Valve is nice enough to tell us that 0.4% of their users are running Wine. Keep going. Um, right, sounds small, uh, but multiply it a bit, right? Steam has 20 million users, so that's about 80,000 wine users on Steam alone. That's enough to be actually kind of significant. Yes. Um, so if each one of these Steam users using wine on Linux bought one game that's about 50 bucks, that's already a $4 million market for Valve. Um, not bad, because they didn't pay us a cent, right? Um, keep going. All right, uh, this is another application. Um, uh, that's the wrong picture. Next slide. Uh, there we go. Okay. Um, yeah, so 11 and a half million users, right? If 0.4% are running uh, wine as Steam, um, then it's a half a million dollars a month from wine users alone going to World of Warcraft. Um, in fact, we might suspect there's more because World of Warcraft is one of those applications that works better than a typical Steam application. Um, there's a lot of Steam apps that work, there's also some that don't. Keep going. Alright, um, so these are users going out of their way to install Wine. Um, it is still the case that most people who want to run World of Warcraft or Steam games need to install these Wine betas. 
which is a bit of work. You have to go to the Wine website, you have to go through this process of adding the repository, downloading it, installing it. Um, it's even installing Wine, the stable version of the default it wants to install, um, has to involve a bit of effort. It's not just click and make it go. Right. Um, so, uh, as the saying goes, all right, lose one user, it's a tragedy, 10 million is a statistic, or something about dying, I guess. Um, so, real life people. Uh, I have friends, as you may or may not be aware. Um, so, next slide. Uh, let's talk about my friends. Wait, next, next slide. <laughs> all right, yeah, uh, keep going. So, my real friends, right? Uh, a guy named Ryan, um, been my friend for a while, and his boss, Mark. They started a business um, back in high school. It's a little local internet service provider during the 90s. They didn't become billionaires. They only became like, you know, 1,000 heirs or something. Um, but still a viable business. It's something you've never heard of unless, next slide, you're this guy. Um, by sheer coincidence, our own Matt Zimmerman happened to work at this place um, long ago. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nearly as wealthy. Um, so his business, like many, it has some silly, stupid internal Windows application written in the mid-90s that um, no one's ever heard of. Not written by Matt, incidentally. Um, it's not bad. It works. It does exactly what they need it to, but they're never going to replace it because it works, right? So um, it's never going to go outside the company, um, and no one's going to rewrite it. The guy that wrote it is off in Mexico or something like that now. Um, and he's had children, so he's never going to touch code again. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, next slide. Um, so these are what we call legacy applications, and we got that term from Microsoft. Um, Microsoft likes to call anything not Microsoft legacy applications, so it's kind of fitting. Um, anything Windows now is a legacy application. It's not a competitor to free software at this point, right? This application is never going to be replaced. It's never going to be competing with any real tool. It's specific to their data, specific to what they have. So it's not any real sort of threat. Um, so the idea here is we don't want to think of making this application work as any obstacle to free software. It's more like a document, driver problems, Windows network stuff, um, you know, all those kinds of things that we feel okay fixing to make Ubuntu possible for people like Mark and Ryan. Keep going. All right. Um, so, Mark and Ryan, my friends, um, represented just tens of thousands of businesses out there, right? This is not a single story. There are many, many businesses that have some stupid application that they completely depend on that they wish never existed, right? Um, the cool thing about this, though, is um, by and large, these applications are their own. So if you're wondering about the question of how do we support a group like this, you don't have to worry about this one application running in wine, necessarily. It's something they'll take care of. It's their own little application. So they're trapped, right? They, they can't switch because of this application, but they, if it works, say, in Wine more easily, then they could use the rest of the free software stack. So um, some of them might even pay Canonical for this kind of support. Hey, um, let's go. Okay, uh, keep going. That didn't work. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Um, so uh, well, that's one major thought for wine, right, is this idea of I have these current applications and I want to use a bunch of but it's just one thing blocking me. So um, here's the, the rhetorical question slide. Uh, the question is, what if ports were very cheap? Um, and I'm not talking about like the drinking port that you do for wine, um, although it's a wonderful pun. Uh, but what if porting was very cheap, right? So normally the process that we think of porting is kind of expensive. You have uh, some application made in Visual Studio for Win32, and you have to rewrite the toolkits, and you have to uh, make it use you know things like OpenGL instead of DirectX, and you have to um, go through this fairly elaborate process that many Windows developers have absolutely no idea where to get started. Let's go. Um, so here's what I said. Okay, what if I could take a Windows application and port it in a very real sense in four hours? Right. 
instead of making it this huge, week, month-long process of rewriting everything, just do it. Um, so that's the goal, right? Create an Ubuntu package, installable Ubuntu package, for a piece of supposedly Windows software that functions exactly like a Linux program should. And what do I mean by functions like a Linux program should? Well, <laughs> that's this, right? Um, install century full, centrally for all users, right? Binaries are read-only and slash user, um, which is something that you don't get on Windows until very recently. Um, updated through Update Manager. This is our huge advantage, right? Um, Windows does not have this sort of thing for it. Um, user configuration is stored in tilde dot app name, right? Um, for many purposes, if you have an application centrally installed tilde dot app name, it's a pretty good application. Let's go. Uh, so here's my target, just as a picked at random. Um, email, uh, just an open source application. It's got tens of millions of users. Um, it caught them ever since Napster disappeared. Uh, and people use it for all sorts of things, mostly piracy, but anyway. Um, open source, it's popular. Um, there is a native version, and the native version now is good. But the native version is a very typical story. The native version of Emule is a program called Amule, which started out as Elmule, and then became Xmule, and then became Amule, and went through about six years of development before it was feature complete, uh, before it could do the same thing Emule could in 2003. Um, so, that's longer than four hours. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, so, how this works, right? Um, internally, the package is just um, email installing the right folders and pre-configuring a wine folder to point to it. Um, that whole process isn't terribly difficult, but it, from a user's point of view, it works exactly the same. It's all free toolkits on our end, all wine and such. Um, wine is open source and free. So, uh, for our purposes, we ported it to open source free apps. Um, doing this though, little snags, right? Um, Emule itself still requires Visual Studio to build, um, but you can fix this if you convert it into a Winelet application or even get it compiling with something called MingW, which uh, can be the first step towards Winelet, but it takes longer than four hours. Uh, also, um, something that is just specific to us, that they have no concept of in Windows, is writing a manual.desktop file. We have only one application launcher, it would be applications, internet, email in this package, um, and that's our own desktop file. Um, we don't want all three of the you know, Windows icons that they put by default. Um, also some shell scripts to handle configuration at the start. Um, the thing is, this took me a bit of time, four hours for this package, and because I know about this post stuff, but um, you can copy my work, right? I can make this into a wiki page and make this process much simpler for the next person who wants to port an application. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, biggest snag is the program that you're porting had to work in line to begin with. Um, this is becoming more and more common these days, such that we can actually think about random applications probably working in line rather than probably not. Um, it's a real dev package. Uh, so, in theory, you can put it in a repository. Users can get it from applications add and remove. can be updated through Update Manager. Um, many Windows apps, by the way, want to do their own updates, and so they all have their own self-updating features in code. There have been... Windows developers have rewritten Update Manager from scratch for their own application about 200 times. Um, so, that's good for us. Yay. Uh, Anyway, um, by using this application, the user who has ported it now gets the benefits of Linux in general. For instance, the rest of Ubuntu. Um, okay, all right. Um, by the way, uh, so like, if um, you have these applications that you're porting, some are more compatible with Wine than they are with Vista. Think about this for a moment. Um, for instance, a 16-bit application can work fine in Wine on AMD64 but it will not work at all in Vista 64. So if you want to play Ski Free, um, or Chips Challenge, or any of the other Windows 3.1 games, um, have fun. Uh, it sounds kind of silly, but uh, there's actually a lot of really old apps, like those made in the 90s, like made by Mark and Ryan, that um, are 16-bit. Um, some applications, in terms of performance, are already better online than on Windows. Um, this is because we're smart. We've got, <laughs> we've got superior memory management in Linux in many cases, sometimes file I.O. Um, 
other stuff. Uh, I like to say that wine is middleware to make these apps run, which means wine is good, clean underwear. <laughs> yes, Linux is clean underwear. Okay, um, so without that many changes, complete building under Linux with wine that becomes possible. You can run this whole thing from the start as though it was a completely free software toolkit. Wine is like any other toolkit in a sense. Um, so, for instance, we could recompile the application with the security features of GCC. We could recompile the application and put it anywhere wine is compatible, like ARM, IA64, or Spark. Uh, Wine's Spark port and IA64 port are kind of lacking at the moment, but in principle, there is nothing stopping you from using Wine and Linux to port a Windows application to an architecture Microsoft didn't even expect it to run on. Um, WineLib supports calling Linux libraries, so um, you can make improve the ported application. For instance, I could write email and write a little hook into it to use our notification system to notify you when a file is done downloading. Something that it can never happen on Windows. Okay, uh, so in review, right? Um, treat legacy applications like documents, um, and it's not that controversial. These are not um, terribly uh, different things, right? We support moving your old documents forward. Let's have your old applications forward. Yeah. <laughs> Next item: uh, <laughs> porting with Wine can be very cheap. Um, next item: Give me a job. All right. Any questions? <laughs>